Hello everybody and welcome to assignment number 5. In the previous assignment we took a closer look at the interests, needs and motives of the stakeholders within your Commons project. Together with the analysis of resources, the consideration of the party's interests, needs and motives is the basis of finding mutual satisfying win-win agreements. But how do we actually act within the negotiation? How do we allocate the resources properly by using the gained knowledge on different resource characteristics and each stakeholder's interests? What kind of strategies do we use to broach our negotiation partner? There is a wide range of theories and research on negotiation strategies. And that is the topic of this next course phase. On a very fundamental level, two types of negotiation tactics can be classified. On the one hand, parties can engage in so-called contentious tactics that aim at claiming value to serve the party's selfish concerns. On the other hand, parties can also apply the so-called problem-solving tactics, which aim at creating value to help all parties satisfy the joint concerns. Contentious tactics, as Dean Pruitt and Peter Carnevaldi define them, are tactics that aim at persuading the other party to make concessions. Examples for these tactics are the use of persuasive arguments, threats, harassment or positional commitment. Some of these tactics are ethically questionable. In addition, most contentious tactics hinder us in both finding integrative potential in negotiations and, second, in building a trustful relationship for sustainable agreements. We will discuss these kinds of strategies in the lecture of this assignment. The tactic of problem solving, and this is what I want to focus on in this introduction video, is a very powerful tool for your negotiations on commons. Problem solving tactics such as expanding the pie or locker rolling can lead to win-win agreements given there is an integrative potential in the negotiation which is either already there or can be created. Remember, integrative potential means that there are solutions that are better than a simple compromise. One very effective strategy to create this integrative potential is the just mentioned tactic of expanding the pie. At its heart, this tactic aims at finding new resources or sub-resources that can be added to the negotiation in order to increase the total sum of resources available to satisfy each party's interest. By doing so, new ways and options for resource allocation arise, which may allow parties to address the interests and concerns of other parties. Imagine, for example, a commonly used well from which the residents of a village get water for their daily use. Imagine now that some villagers own cattle and therefore demand more water than the others. However, one of the underlying needs of the other villagers is the nutrients of the families to which milk could make a valuable contribution. The owners of the cattle can add a share of their milk, thus expanding the pie. Using this tactic means that the different parties' interests could be more efficiently addressed than when they focus solely on the one resource. In the given example, the one resource would be water from the well. Another very extensively investigated problem-solving tactic in negotiations is lock rolling. When applying this strategy, parties systematically exchange concessions corresponding to their preferences on the available resources. Just remember the orange example. One sister's preference was the pulp and she could easily make concessions on the peel, whereas the other sister's preference was the peel and she could easily make concessions on the pulp. By systematically exchanging concessions in accordance with each party's preferences, they could find an integrative agreement that was far better than a simple compromise. Applied to the example of the small village community negotiating on the water from the well, the members of the village could systematically exchange concessions on different resources such as water and milk, thus addressing each party's individual concerns. 
The owners of the cattle could make concessions on the resource milk and in exchange receive concessions on the resource water. In any case, it is important to keep in mind that negotiators need to carefully prepare before they start the negotiation. As you have learned in the past assignments, this preparation should include both the systematic analysis of all stakeholders' interests, needs and motives and the systematic analysis of the resources and their characteristics. A fundamental requirement for understanding each party's underlying concern is the open communication between the parties. The respective negotiation tactic is called information exchange. By exchanging information on their preferences, interests and needs, parties can understand the other party's concerns, which is the key to applying the aforementioned problem-solving tactics in negotiations. However, you need to keep in mind that the open exchange of information on one's own interests and needs can also be exploited. Thus, it strongly depends on the trust between the parties to what extent the sharing of truthful information is appropriate. As in other contexts, it should always be a give and take, not only with respect to material resources, but also concerning the exchange of information. Given a trustful relationship between the stakeholders and commons projects, the knowledge of each party's interests, motives and concerns and the systematic analysis of resources and their characteristics can help to apply different problem-solving strategies such as expanding the pie or log rolling, which in turn will help parties to reach mutual satisfying sustainable agreements. Once again, I wish you all the best for this fifth assignment.